G'day and welcome back to our YouTube channel, uh, Nick, where we're talking restoration oh. of old boats. Uh, so far, we've restored magnificently a 23-foot Bertram, which we, uh, we took the stern drive out, we put the pod on and we put a Yamaha 350 on the back. Yes. Um, now this, uh, you'll notice, is not in chronological order in terms of our doing up of old boats. Correct. But we thought because we're on the theme of, as you mentioned, old Bertrams, we would uh, go from Beast 1, which was our original 23, yep. to Beast 2, which was <laughs> a, a project of greater scope and ambition because it was based on the 25 foot Bertram, um, which Andrew and I had always really lusted after as we were growing <laughs> up. You know, you you would see them and think, oh, that's a massive big boat. Isn't what that a big, big five bridge cruiser? Look at it, the 25. And you think, well, there's the 23 and the 25, you wouldn't think there's much in it. You know, two feet, what can yeah. two feet make? But two feet makes a hell of a difference with the boat. They're pretty much um, two feet wider, yeah. you know, so two, they're bigger, they're, you know, I don't know what they, they'd be, you know, 15% bigger everywhere yeah. sort of thing. So you can um, fit Beast 1 inside Beast 2. Yes, um, but obviously because we'd done the big V8 uh, on Beast 1, Beast 2 was going to be something different. Um, the question was about finding one. Obviously, we wanted to find one that was reasonable, that wasn't a complete rebuild. But, um, yep. you know, if this happened maybe five or six years ago, yep. I guess. Um, and at that stage, the, boat, the second-hand boat market isn't what it is in 2021, which no, is I pretty hot. I think they're actually appreciating it at the moment, yeah. old Bertrams. Um, yep. Back then, though, you could pick up a, a pretty nice, pretty neat... 20, well, 30 year old, you know, Bertram 25 on a trailer for moderate money. Yeah, for, you know, 20,000 yeah. sort of money. Which um, for that money is a hell of a lot of boat. Yes, it is. Um, so we're obviously based in Tasmania, a little state at the bottom of Australia. And um, the boat market here is is uh, not huge, but there's no. always the odd Bertram 25 coming up for sale. So um, we actually found a spot that had a couple of them. We did indeed. This, the Bertram 25, they built literally 1,500 of these and they are everywhere and they are cheap. This is a clearing sale and there is not one, but two. Good grief. Look at this thing. Oh, it's a massive headache. A massive headache. So, Drew, this is a massive oh, opportunity, isn't it? You no, it's not an opportunity. I Every... have my concerns. You love crap, old crap boats. Do not bid. So do not sneeze. Do not cough. Do not put your hand up. Interested? No. No. Excuse me. No, what, would you, what, what do you think, though, in all seriousness, yep. what are we going to pay for our project boat? I think we've got to cap it. These things, you know, you pay 30 for a good one. You pay 20 for a rubbish one. So those are a couple of clearing sale boats, and really yes. we felt that they were um, they were a bit expensive. Far too, well, they didn't sell. In fact, I think they're still for sale today. Um, is that right? I think so. I was down there the other day. I think one of them certainly is. With two, <laughs> there's two other engines sitting there, stern drops, spares. If your boat hasn't sold in six <laughs> years, probably means you're not meeting the market. Yeah. Um, but this was about the time, you know, that Gumtree was really yes. good and. It's sort of where bargains turned up. So you'd yep. scroll through Gumtree, put in 25 Bertram, and you'd find them, you know, in New South Wales, parked on the side of the road for literally five grand. You know, there were boats yep. like that. Victoria's the place. Yeah, Gippsland yeah. Gippsland Lakes and round Melbourne. Yep. There must have been hun like high, hun nearly, there must have been thousands of things sold there back in the day. So 1,500 or thereabouts built, I think, at International Marine right. of the Bertram 25. I reckon 1,000 of them went in the Melbourne market. Yeah, probably. You know, they're, they're just there. You go off Sorrento, they're all in the moorings there. It's very Bertram 25 rich environment. Yeah, um, we weren't in a massive hurry, although I guess with um, projects for TV, you're always kind of 
looking to get it done. Yep. Um, then there was one that had been for sale um, with a broker here locally, and you're always a little bit suspicious of your brokers selling boats because, <laughs> not suspicious, but they're always going to be, that, that's where expensive boats Correct. get sold. And anyway, I think this one had listed, you know, for maybe 30 and then it came back to 28, and then it came back to 25, yeah. which is never a great thing when you're trying to sell your boat, when you're uh, endlessly slashing the price. Anyway, yeah. I think it, what was it? It was sort of low 20s by the time we went and had a look at it. Yes, I think it was. Um, I think we paid what, what they were asking for, 22,000. Yeah. Um, um, I went and saw it first, <clears throat> I'm gonna, and I had you on the phone. I'll just geek you out a little bit, if you don't mind, okay, though, sure. because the Bertram um, 25 story, which, yes begins, you know, back, 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 back in the day, back in the 60s, whatever. Um, originally, they came out, the Generation 1 boats, yes. or, or the the first popular generation, were the narrow flybridge yeah. boats. And so they had, the flybridge is a little bit narrow, they don't have a bow sprit, and they typically have twin six-cylinder Mercruisers, the old 250 Chev engines, um, and then in 1984 they went to the Gen 2, which is the wider flybridge. So very fashion. A bit more nicely dressed up yeah. um, here Molded and there. Bow Molded bow sprit. Bow sprit. Yeah. Um, they're probably a nicer boat, but the one we were looking at was uh, a Generation One, so it had the six cylinders, raw water cooled, you know, no uh, no fresh water cooling. Uh, Twenty two grand. Twenty two grand, but on a trailer. Oh, yeah. On a tri actual massive trailer, which uh, you know is worth. A lot. If, if you're going to, to if you go to the trailer shop now yes. to buy that trailer, you are north of twenty grand. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, um, the trailer is it was a bit rusted and whatever yep. else, but it was still solid. It was registered. Yep. So we thought not a bad buy, um, but obviously we needed to take it for a run first. It was interesting. The bike who had owned it, or the bike who bought it. Because it, it was a boat that had come from Victoria, as you say, yep. and its previous owner had supposedly spent money on the on the stern drives and stump something or other. I don't know. doubt that he did. I don't doubt that he did. <laughs> um, sold it to a young guy here in Tassie, and he had taken it out with his family a couple of times and yep. got a bit um, frightened of it, really. It, yep. You know, it, it was temperamental. Yes. Yeah. It kept overheating and whatever else. And beeping, we all, you know, yes, stalling and, stopping, and yes. yeah, all that sort of um, stuff. Which it did on our sea trials day, but yeah. uh, here's a look at when we first laid eyes on Beast 2. Serious faces, game faces on at this juncture. Don't Time faces, for don't give anything away. consumer advice. Yeah. We would suggest if you are contemplating the purchase of a large item such as this vessel here, that it pays to do your homework, Hardy. Nick, only fools rush in and that is why we have organised Sea Trials Day. It's no point buying a Bertram 25 mm. if it doesn't go. Mm. Oh, oh solid. so solid. Oh, so solid. Ooh. <laughs> Righto. <laughs> yes. Port engine, Andrew, just, uh, Apparently yesterday, running a bit hot. Nick, like so many of these old Bertrams sitting around the country, this Bertram 25 has not been on the water for at least a year. So uh, the owner popped in the water yesterday to bring it around so we could drive it today. Yeah, on the way to bringing it around, the uh, needle started to rise. He switched it off, which was good. These engines, which are six cylinder Chevy engines, you know when they were first made, the first uh, generation of these? In the mid 2000s. 1929. These things designed in 1929, you know, that it, that it goes at all is pretty remarkable. It is big, it is open, it is airy, I like that. I mean, this is a 1980 model boat, but here where I sleep is nice and airy and comfortable and I can spend a week on this boat. This is, I'm now starting to come around and get excited. The head is here, I might test it out. With that unpleasant thought in mind, I was in the cockpit doing a bit of due diligence. 
This is, uh, if you are buying a boat, worth looking out for. This is the builder's plate uh, for this boat, which actually gives you a serial number for the hull, 378. Now, the ad for this boat said it was a 1984 model. I rang the people who built it. It's actually launched in 1980, so that's just a uh, little tip. is also a lot bigger. On the 23, on the Beast, it's a bit small and sort of would only accommodate one, but a couple of you could quite happily sit up here and go marlin fishing, Diagon. I've just come from the central or the lower helm, Drew, where there is, there is, uh, as you may expect, a little bit of a mechanical glitch. We're only running on the, uh, on the starboard engine. The port motor, yeah. she's hot. She's red hot. Um, not a great thing with these. These are engines, Andrew, which are six-cylinder Chevys. Yeah. Do you know when um, when they were first designed, the first version of these? Those ones look very good. I'd say the mid-2000s. Yeah, a little bit beyond that, a little bit older than that. These things were first actually put in a car in 1929. <laughs> the fact that it goes at all is sort of remarkable. We had plenty to think about. She was a big boat, a mighty boat, but one that felt like it may explode at any minute. The price was 22 grand. I'd seen one on eBay for five, but the broker said he had something that would get the deal over the line. So if you were to do a positive and negative sort of um, a balance chart sheet. on balance sheet on paper, Nick, a negative would be the overheating motor. A positive would be a trailer. They are at the upper end of what you can trailer. You need, yep. you know, signs and over width and all that stuff. But people do drive around with birdie 25s behind them. And the D-Max is rated to tow one. This is the uh, big triaxle trailer that will come with our boat, should we buy it. Um, it's a bit rough and ready, but if you have to replace this... Yeah, it's like fifteen to $18,000. I'm seeing it as a positive. Positive. A tick. Probably only just a positive. There was plenty of rust and lots of money to be spent, but it would allow us to be mobile, and that can only be a good thing. We decided it was all good, great in fact, and settled on a price which was in fact the asking price. For 22,000 Australian dollars, we had purchased our own large and impressive Flybridge Cruiser. Sea trials, so that was, uh, we basically fell in love with it. It did, uh, did overheat, <laughs> um, so you get that, but um, you sort of expect that. Yeah, but it just ran, oh. it ran quite nicely. Oh, it, it really did. sounded nice. You did. Um, it was down a bit of power, but it still went pretty well. It did. Um, and, you know, we were enjoying the fact that it was a bigger boat mm. than what we used to. Mm. You can walk around yeah. on it and that sort of stuff. They, they are. There's a lot of room in them. And, you know, for $22,000, which you can't really buy, you know, a four and a half metre tinny for that. No. Uh, it is a whole lot of boat. comes with a whole lot of problems <laughs> um, and issues and ongoing um, maintenance. And, you know, the trailer is another story. But... Uh, we basically fell in love and paid our yeah. money. Yeah, and the thing that I liked too, it was it was as original. It hadn't yep. been bastardised. There yep. was no, you know, no one had gotten to the kitchen and tried to bloody do some homemade thing or whatever. It was it was an as original, 1980. 1980. Um, you know, hull with original engines, obviously. Um, but it, it gave us our blank canvas from which we could then. Paint. It's it had um, and all those international marine boats come with a little aluminium plate on the back of them. Yeah. And it had uh, its build number, which I think was you know three ninety three or something like that. And we rang the factory in Melbourne, and they were very kind. They looked at their book and they yep. said, "Yep, that one's a nineteen eighty build." She came out with those engines, blah blah blah. But it's a good point that you make. Um, about that unmolested. If you are interested yeah. in, in project boating, the less holes and hole saws and stuff that people have done to the boat, the better off you are. Um, yep. Original is best by far. Yeah, because when you start working on it, um, you'll notice that it's a beautiful, big, solid yep. thing to work on. Yep. Um, but anyway, that's down the track. So yeah, down the track, we are going to decide what sort of pod, uh, what sort of power. But first, uh, we sort of need to get to know her, don't we? Well, the thing was in Hobart. The boat yep. was in Hobart and we wanted to um, to get, and the trailer was unregistered and there was a bit of stuff around that. So we thought, what better way than to travel by sea to your joint, which yes. is 
what, 60 miles or something? 60 like. miles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So next time, uh, next instalment of our YouTube journey on yep. Beast 2 is uh, getting it from Hobart to Hartie's house. We don't even need to get rescued. <laughs> now, please remember to subscribe to our channel. And uh, yeah, if you want to watch more of these videos, it starts all the way back with Beast 1, which was, you know, six videos ago now, but there's plenty of uh, boating information here on this channel. And it's all the stuff that sort of <clears throat> we haven't used before that didn't make it into the TV show. So yeah. as Hardy says, uh, like and subscribe.